Right, so once again, in the syllabus content area, I think the problem you guys have is you look at this, you are really worried, I don't know why. Right, basics. Don't worry. Okay, so don't worry about this. These are the more important ones. The second and third part, if you are looking at the revision already, which I think some of you are, this is where the testing can possibly come out. Because these are new content areas, okay? So for example, this one. You need to know this. You should know this by now. Will they test this? I really don't think so because it's really very simple. It's really very simple. If, if I pick you out offhand and ask you, can you describe what happens for infiltration? What is the cause for infiltration? The water is here. What will pull it down? What, what is this magical force? Gravity. That's it. That's it. Okay? You think about it. If the floor is this floor, right? The floor that we're on is cement floor. Will infiltration take place? No. So it must have gravity and it must have spaces, spore, uh, cracks, right? Spaces like this. So that is it. Okay, so you use what you have to describe this. If, you, if this really comes out, I don't know what you've been praying to, but it really works. Okay, let me know. Right, so this is where it's important. Dew point is something that's new. Dew point, you cannot get confused. What does it do? It is condensation. Right, it is the degree, it's the temperature at which condensation takes place. That's it. When condensation takes place, what happens? It leads to cloud formation. But for cloud formation and for for this to happen, you need one more very key thing, which we, cover, which we will cover in three slides time. Okay, so dew point is the temperature where condensation occurs. Is it a fixed temperature? No, it's not fixed. It depends on the humidity percentile. So it will jump, right? But you are not expected to be able to calculate dew point because you don't do that level of GI, okay? Relative humidity is the amount of water that can be held in that pocket of air. So the hotter it is, the, the higher chance that your humidity will decrease. Because when things are heated up, the pocket of air expands, the percentile will drop. Okay? Now, cloud formation, these diagrams, this is the basic diagram that's extracted from your water cycle. So this one, you should know, this is the problem. Okay, when you're at this point here, you must be able to identify, describe or explain even how the dust particles help you form water. Okay, when your raindrops gather, what happens? They become bigger, right? And eventually they fall. As they fall, they can break apart. So all these factors, you don't need to know why, but you need to be able to describe this process of rain formation. Okay, this is the basis of rain formation. However, this is also not what they like to test because this is without context. So what is the context then? The context is these two. These two things you must know. Okay, these two things you must know. What is convectional rain and what is your relief rain? What are the conditions that will encourage these things to happen? What are the situations that must be in place? What are the conditions that must be in place for these two types of rains to occur? What do they look like? What is the impact on the area they affect? First one, convectional rain is everywhere. This is a non-color image, means this is from the textbook. Okay, you must be able to, if given a similar image, be able to explain that this type of rain is convectional rain. Okay, convectional rain. Please remember your syllabus only has two types of rains. Okay, so as long as they show you any sort of cloud formation and rainfall, it is going to be convectional rain, right? On, only convectional rain is, is in your syllabus with cloud formation. So, if you see online questions that talk about anything that is not convectional or relief rain, then that is not in your syllabus, ignore. There are many types of rain formations. Uh, in this in this manner, okay. Relief rain is never shown like this because relief rain requires a relief. So if they show you an image, right, whether it's a photograph, a drawing with a mountain, it is relief rain straight away. I don't even need to look at the, anything else. I should know it's immediately relief rain. 
Okay, now can you take a look at your handout, ladies? The handout that I just gave you. Right, take the handout out. Take it out, take your hand out, out. Okay, before you proceed to the question, can you take a look at the name? Did you write your name down? If not, can you please write your name now? Right, look at the first image on page one, the photograph on page one. Okay, photograph on page one, what does that show you? It shows you a very nice coastal village, right? So you should have this, okay? Yes, I borrow it from Getty Images. Right, so I show you the colored image. This is a real town in the Netherlands, right, Holland, okay? I know in our mind, right, when you think of the Netherlands, you think of the Dutch lady, the milk, milkmaid with the funky looking hat and clocks. And you think of a uh, windmill, but it's not like that, okay? Netherlands is largely like this. Beautiful uh, mountain, coastal areas, high risk of flooding. So, with a stimulus like this, this can be a rainfall question. So now you describe the type of rainfall that uh, Makarsa experiences. No clouds. This isn't even a photo of a raining moment. Okay, I take it back. There are clouds, huh? Look at the sky, there are clouds. Right? It's not there's no rain. How in the world am I supposed to know what rain this is? Go back to syllabus. Syllabus has two types, right? There is this and there is this. So which one is it? Is it relief or is it convectional? Okay, form that image in your head. This is what it will look like. This is possibly the, the toughest type of stimulus they give you is a photograph. Because they try to force what you learn in theory onto the real world and they try to make you do that match. Okay, so if you're wondering, then what can it look like? It can look like this. Literally, it can look like this. Okay, where you have image and you are supposed to explain in this real world situation what is the geographical concept that is that's applicable here. Three marks. Okay. Now, now I, I, I want you to think back because this process helps you eliminate when you're doing your revision. This is worth three marks. If I tell you to explain con, uh, evaporation, it's still worth three marks. Would I ask you to explain evaporation? I wouldn't, right? Would you? You would uh, if you're a nice, kind person, but we're all not kind and nice. Okay. So logically, when you're looking at content that you're revising for, you cannot memorize everything. It is not physically possible. What do you give up? Things that are too simple, okay? Right, so that's how you do your cards at home. Of course, if you're gonna give something up, can you please check with me? I'm okay, man. just check with me, okay? I will look at what you're asking about. I will tell you, okay, this can potentially come out. We've actually seen questions like this before, right? Because there are some times where if it's not three marks, it requires you a one mark answer, identify, or two mark answer, it is possible they still do that, okay? But three marks, where, where? Okay, the final component here is the big is the big problem in topic one. It is your winds. Okay, where you are looking at one and two uh, is foundation. This is the killer. Okay, your local and regional winds. You must be able to explain. You must be able to describe. If they give you image, you must be able to do both. Okay. You must be able to, if they give you a case study based on climograph, explain which one is at work. It is possible, I repeat that, they give you a case study in the using climograph and link to regional winds. But it means that they are looking at monsoons only. Okay? So I'm I, I just want to want to very briefly touch this. In wind, it is heat that is playing havoc. This is it. Hot air rise, cold air sink. Because of this dissonance, your pressure gradient will be different. 
the difference between atmospheric pressure is when one side is hotter, one side is colder, right? The area that's hotter will have lower pressure because the hot air passes rises up. The area with cooler air will have higher pressure and then it will move from high pressure to low pressure, okay? So it all boils down to heat, right? You must remember it all boils down to heat. Whether you're, hey, Why did they cancel my... Okay, whether you are looking at uh, land breeze, sea breeze, or you are looking at monsoons, the first thing that you should look at is what has happened with the heat. Hey, where is your... Why can't I find your class? Ah, okay, okay. I wonder. Right, what has happened with the heat and because of that, what is happening? Uh, I want to repeat, Coriolis, you just need to remember cross equator deflects opposite direction. You're not required to explain why it happens. Okay? What is this? Right, so wind movement is really difference in air pressure. It will move from high pressure to low pressure. That's it. Okay. Do you remember my example of hot air rises? How do you remember hot air will rise? Or cold air will sink? Yeah, that, it expands so you rise, right? But your human body produces hot air, right? And if it doesn't rise, you won't smell it. Okay. Your air conditioners are always placed high up so that the cold air will sink down. So this is your, these are things that I would hold on to to help me remember my base. Yes. No. Deflection. Just remember deflection. No, no. Move on. Okay. So the simple one is of course land breeze and sea breeze. Right, land breeze and sea breeze. It can be annotate. Right, one mark. It can be uh, this is the phenomena shown. Explain what is going on. Three marks. It can be story. You are at the seaside and suddenly you feel a breeze at night. Right? Fearing for your life. Your friend explains what is truly going on. Describe what your friend explained to you. Three marks. Okay? So sea breeze, the reverse of course is land breeze at night, which is a scarier one. Okay? Always remember, if you cannot remember the sequence where it goes from or which one happens day and night, remember my story is always at night, I go to the sea, something is pulling me into the water. Why would they push me into the water? Because it's coming from the land to the sea. Okay? So these are my anchor points. If you can remember without anchor point, great. Right? Don't. Okay, but please don't write the story of Mr. Cole's mother telling me a lie about the ghost. Okay, those are anchor points for you only. Okay, so with this understanding, uh, I'm going to move on to the most complex one to end today. Now, October and February, are these locked in? No, depending on where you are, it just needs to be the end part of the year, the second half of the year. Okay? Because if you are nearer to the equator, you push forward a little bit. Okay? If you are further away, if you are not looking at uh, not looking at India, the further away you go further up to the northern more the more northern parts, you may have to push backwards a little bit. Okay, but October to February, end of the year is normal. Okay? This is why, because this period of time we have winter in the northern hemisphere. So all your preferred countries, countries in Europe, countries in Asia are all having winter. Okay? So this area here, cooler temperatures means higher pressure. Right? Because this one air sinks. Okay, warmer temperature means what? This one has lower pressure. Why? Because air rises. Okay, with this in mind, where would the direction of wind be? 
it will move from high to low, right? So it will definitely move this way. Okay? Make sense? Higher pressure on top, lower pressure below. Just now we talked about it. It moves from high to low. So it moves this way. When you reach the equator, what will happen? Coriolis kicks in. Okay? As it's, as it's moving, of course it won't be straight down. Right? It will be at an angle. So it will deflect. Therefore, you have your monsoons. Okay? If you are looking at the reverse, let me find the reverse one. Let me not keep this. Okay, if you're looking at the reverse, right, June to September, what will you have? You will have June, this is uh, hot. So this is low pressure. Below is cold. So this is high pressure. So the arrows will be going this way up. Right? Generally, it'll be going up. It should want to go up. Okay? Then, of course, you imp impose your rotation, deflection. Therefore, you arrive as the southwest monsoon. Okay, so... How do I remember all this? I remember that it is heat that causes wind movement. I remember that the hot areas will rise up, you have low pressure, the cold areas will sink and have high pressure. That is when I decide which month of the year who is having summer. And with that summer concept in, I will look at the stimulus given to me. Is this going to be southwest or is this going to be northeast? Okay, based on this. So when I do my climate questions myself, it takes a little bit more time because I will write physically down hot air rise, cold sink. I will write down next to the stimulus as a reminder to myself. Okay, because that is the most important thing. With that in mind, it's very unlikely you describe the wrong monsoon. Now, what's the problem with describing the wrong, wrong monsoon? It means everything is correct except it's the wrong month of the year and it doesn't apply to the thing. So it's a zero. So you can write a completely correct answer, no ATQ, you get a zero. Good news is nowadays they have locked this into three marks. In the past, this could be a five mark question, including sketching the thing. No more sketching. That's why you don't learn sketching. Okay, no more sketching. All right, good news. Okay, but the flip side is three marks, they will still need a complete description. Okay, so let it sink in for a minute. Right, once again, uh, low, high, what happens? You have the movements coming up and then it will deflect with Coriolis effect as it crosses the equator. It will arrive in the Indian Peninsula as Southwest Monsoon. Why is this bad? Okay, why is this bad? Why do monsoons have so much rain? Because when they reach destination, they cover this body of water. Okay, as your wind goes over water, it picks up moisture. Okay, it will only drop moisture when it hits landfall and it slows down. Right? When it slows down, think of it as we talked about earlier rain formation, they jam together. The water particles in the clouds merge, become too heavy, it falls on the ground as rain. Okay? There is an ocean. Huh? They go past the oceans. As a result of going past the oceans, they pick up massive amounts of water that cannot be cleared within a day. That is why when this hits India, the Indian Peninsula, you will have a few months of rainfall. There will be prolonged periods where you have two to three weeks of rainfall. Okay? If you have lived in India before as a very, very young child or you have visited India at the wrong season, you will experience this. It is actually quite horrifying because it never stops raining. Okay? In Singapore, we also have very severe rainfall. Sometimes it seems as if it rains for a week. 
it actually stops, right? There are moments where there are gaps, right? When you hit monsoon, full monsoon, there is no gap. It is constant, intense rain, right? So those of us who have never had the pleasure of living in Australia or in India, you will never know how crazy it actually is. Okay. Right. So what is most essential in this? Monsoons. Land and sea breeze. My two rainfalls. Now, by elimination, uh, uh, by elimination, you should be able to identify scale. Then you will know whether it's monsoon or local, uh, regional or local winds, then a sea or monsoon. By elimination, you should be able to identify the rainfall type very quickly when you look at the question. Okay? Because your, your service is limited in scope. There is only that many things that they can test. Right? So when you are doing your revision, when you are doing questions, when you are facing the exam itself, this is one way to save some time. Okay? Yes. Can they OEQ this? Can they OEQ this? Uh, no, not like me. How would you OEQ uh, land and sea breeze? Land breeze is more severe than sea breeze? No. We don't talk about intensity, right? When you talk about monsoons, also same thing. What can they OEQ? You can OEQ the next topic, topic 2 and topic 3. Because there are a lot of uh, interventions, preventions, factors. Yeah. Topic 1, there isn't. Okay, they've asked that before, yes. Uh, so, if you're talking about impact of altitude or latitude or surface type, which is more severe, it can come out. But we've not seen it recently. Uh. Even in the previous syllabus, it's not something they commonly test. It, they've tested it before, I think twice. Once in core and one in elect. Okay, so, okay, good point. Uh, if we are looking at that, okay, if we are looking at this, latitude, altitude, uh, type of surface, and the final one is distance from the sea. One, two, three, and four. Okay, if I OEQ this, I OEQ this component here, ladies. Right, one, two, three, and four. I have four factors. I tell you of these four factors, altitude is the most significant in impacting temperature. Altitude is the most significant in impacting temperature. Right, let's take a minute. How are you going to argue that yes, altitude is the most significant? Altitude is more significant. Okay, so deal with it versus one by one versa. Latitude means where you are on the along the latitude lines. So is it possible that you're on the equator and you get snow? Okay. If you are 3,000 meters above elevation, it's possible, right? So is this stronger than this? Yes. I will argue that way in evaluation. Can I argue this against type of surface? If you are high enough, no matter what kind of lousy surface, about how absorbent it is, will you still get snow? Can you still overcome this? It's possible. If, once again, 3,000 meters above elevation. Why do I keep harping on 3,000 meters? Because a lot of the Asian mountains over around 3,000 meters. Right? The mountains in Korea, the mountains in the world of China, Japan, they all over around 3,000. And a lot of them are snow capped. So you have examples to show this in your evaluation. Okay? What about distance from the sea? What is the distance from the sea? Is continental a maritime impact? Is it a very clear impact on temperature? No, because it's not only being milder only. Okay? So this definitely has a stronger stronger role. Okay? So if you had a OEQ like this, I would use this as the most significant. If they don't lock this, they lock latitude. What will I do? I will say that this is weird. Because this seems to have a stronger O than this. Okay? Now this is peculiar. This one, there is one. Uh, recommended stance play. 
they, which is also why they don't try to test this, because they try to keep it open. Okay. Why do they try to keep it open? Because they try to help you. Things like this, if the stance is altitude, right? Your three factor paragraphs are correct. Your, your final evaluation is wrong. Your L2, five max. Five. Five max. Even though everything is there. Because your premise is wrong. Your evaluation premise is wrong. So, this is why Cambridge tries not to give this kind of factors that have one very significant, very clear winner to try not to. So, as to help you, which I want you to think, right? As long as it's logically argued. They can still give you a lot. They can still give you the evaluation score. They can still be not great. Mm. All four? No. Okay, so I come back to this. Huh? If they give you four points below the question, the question is altitude is the most important factor in determining temperature at the location. Most important. Must you deal with four? No, most is three. So I will leave one out. Which one? I cannot remember. Which one I cannot leave out? I cannot leave out altitude. Uh. Because this is a given factor, right? But I just need three factors compare, uh, comparing three factors to give me the most already. So I don't need the point. Okay? Can you do four instead of three? If you know the other three, you're not very firm. Can. In your syllabus, it's also okay. They can give you that allowance as well. So they found this holistically at the end, they look at everything and then they evaluate the evaluation and then they give you the LP score or LP score. Okay. So this one, sometimes okay, we really don't know what they will give you. They've shown us one question with points like this, one question there's the whole style without points. Okay, so sometimes I guess they themselves are not very sure whether they're going to give you help. Or not. Okay. I don't find this helpful. I find it more helpful when it's open. Because then I'm not locked into certain things. Okay? But we really don't know. Okay? And I will never know until maybe five years down the road where I've got five O level papers to look at. Yes. 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 So can okay, good point, huh? Can I then talk about the altitude versus latitude? I'm very sure of it. Then I mentioned in brief type of surface also it has some impact, distance of the sea has some impact. Uh, no, you need to have three clear, uh, fully developed points. Fully explained with examples. Minimum three. Okay? Yes. So you, okay, like what I did just now, right? You talk about how altitude can overcome in those situations. Yeah. But you have to compare against the other two. Yeah, you have to compare against the other two. To show that this is indeed stronger. Okay? The problem with not comparing with the other two, right? If you just compare against altitude and I come to a conclusion, is but you earlier on talk about type of surface. So are you unsure that it's better than type of surface? So you intentionally leave it out. You cannot can, can, if that's the case, right? If Cambridge is guessing, they won't give you the full L3 mark. Because it's not complete. Yes. Which part? Ah, okay. Okay. That was the most problematic question that we saw in the old syllabus. So let's look at these two. What is the cause for monsoons, for the start of monsoons? What was the thing I told you I will go back into? Wind movement, right? What caused wind movement? Pressure, pressure difference. What caused pressure difference? Pressure. Correct. So, yeah. is temperature difference also the cause for land series? Yeah. It is, right? So, are the factors the same? They are. So, this particular question, right, in the fan series, Talks about other other cause for monsoon and then and sea breeze the same, so you have to say yes. Now, how are you going to explain this? You need to give me a paragraph about how monsoons are, uh, uh, how monsoons happen, and you need to give me a paragraph about how land and sea breeze happen. 
your conclusion paragraph will be at what is at the base of this two. They are both triggered by your temperature differences, which will impact what? Which will impact your temperature gradient, which then will cause temp direction of wind, speed of wind in both monsoons and then series. So the factors are the same. Okay. Now, how do you get a full eight marks in that syllabus in nine marks here? You need to tell me scale. There is a difference. So your answer, right, while you're talking that the factors are the same, to show that you truly understand, you need to include the intensity is different. Monsoons is regional temperature difference. Land and sea breeze is local then, uh, temperature difference. Then you get eight. Then you will score eight. Okay? Right, that is what we discussed actually with all my friends around in similar schools. But deep inside, we believe that if you don't talk about the scale thing, they'll still give you the name. Okay? Because I've seen uh, samples around, when you average out, right, they don't write in so detailed. Okay? So that's a good question. That, that one, uh, okay, if you want, right, that's one question that you can try. You try it out, you send it to me, I'll get it marked for you. Okay, because you need to practice Thinking about it and writing it out is a completely different experience. You need to practice the writing. Okay? Right, finally, I've been getting a couple of questions about how, how can I slot all this revision in. Ladies, I don't expect you to spend co coherent two hours doing job. It is not possible. Right? So where does this go? This goes in between your math and science. You're doing math, you're doing science, right? In between, you cannot do the math anymore. What do you do? You do two questions of 10 series. Two questions you send to me. That's it. Okay? Midway through science, you cannot take it already. Do two questions you send to me. Okay? I just need you to do in between. You will still meet the same volume. Right? Okay? So, this piece of work, not tomorrow. You don't have life. You don't have the life to finish it tomorrow. When you are done, you submit to me online. Okay? I'll put the link out again. You send me the soft copy. It's a lot easier. I can get back to you faster. Okay? Those of you who hard copy in my picture hole, please go and collect. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. See you tomorrow.